And now the end is near And so I fade the final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I travel east and every highway and more, much more than this. I did it my way. Regrets, I had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do And so it's true Without exemption I planned Each charted course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I did all More than I could chew But through it all When there was doubt I hate it up And spit it out And I stood tall And in it my way Of love I've loved and cried I had my fill My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all so amusing To think I did all that And may I say Not in a shy way Oh no, oh no not me I did it mine For what is a man, what has he got, if not himself, then he has not, to say the things he truly feels, and not the words of one who kneels, the record shows. I find it all so amusing To think I did all that And may I say Not in a shy way 
Oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has lost.
Brothers, would you please stand? Hear with me the words of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. None of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. I has not seen nor ear heard nor the heart of anyone conceive what God has prepared for those who love Him. Please be seated. 
Good morning to you all and welcome to this service of the celebration of the life of Moira. Thank you for also joining us online and thank you also for those that are able to attend in person for complying with the protocols uh, which is so necessary today. We now invite Daniel, who will light a candle that celebrates Moira's life as she came to this earth to her family as God's gift to, to them and to the rest of us. Just the one, Daniel. Just the one. Thanks very much. As the candlelight flickers, and as we remember with thanksgiving, Moira, so we offer our prayers. Almighty Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Help us to live as those who with Moira believed in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Come now, Lord, and strengthen this faith, faith and hope in us all the days of our life through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now, on behalf of the congregation at St. George's, we make our condolences to all of you as family, particularly Davina and Tiffany, and to the rest of you as we mourn Moira's passing. Be assured of our prayers for you and our thoughts for you at this time. I invite you now, in a moment of silence, to just think of what Moira's life meant to you. Your personal encounters with her, whether she needed to say affirming things to you and whether she had to challenge you. Just think of how she presented herself. What kind of sibling she was to you. wife and mother, grandmother, work colleague, friend, neighbor, fellow worshiper. And in your hearts, give thanks to God. Lord, receive the thanksgiving from our hearts. Because of your goodness, you've blessed us with Moira. Through her, you enriched and matured us. And for this, we give you thanks. Life is like a lit-up candle. 
And so we will light a second and a third candle as we celebrate before God with thanksgiving Moira's life. Benjamin will come now and light the second candle. This candle we celebrate Moira as being part of community. That community was her family. That community was her marriage, her own family life, as well as the wider community, her church life. All of that. And then once Benjamin is completed, we will invite Wilfred Constance to come and do tribute. In between, we'll have a slideshow uh, as a way of reflecting on the captured life of Moira. And then Gavin will come and do the thanks. Uh, before each of those who have to speak at the lectern come, please allow us just to disinfect the podium. Thank you. Goeiemorgen allemaal, reverend en familielede, hooggeplaasdes van die eerstelijke mense, die is welkom vir dag. Ek gaan net kortliks vir u een paar skietse noem uit ons geliefd kooste tante Moerase lewe. Eerstens, sy is geboren in Mosselbaai op die 11e van die, op die 16e van die 11e maand 1950 uit die hevelik tussen William Joseph, George Constance en Sophia Constance. Hulle is, sy is die tweede, of is die tweede oudste van sewe kinders, waarvan die oudste dochter oorlede is, en nou is hulle sies, dit is Moira, Yvonne, Paris, Evel en Kevin. Nou die Constance en Moselwa het een geweldige, invloedrijke naam gehad. Hulle was mense wat baie mense aangemoedig het en ander mense gejaap het. Ons groot opa, dit is nou Vagadien Constance, was in die Anglikaanse kerk door die christelike geloof geleid die vader Jenkins, want hy was een moeslim. Haar vader, William Joseph, was een strijder in die Tweede Wereldoorlog. Hy het ook een toebroek beklui vir die apartis regering. Iets wat ons, my minne min van ons weet, is dat ma, Sophia, was die eerste kleerlingvrouw wat in Mosselbaai opgestaan het vir haar civil rights. Sy was een methodist en destijds was haar nie methodiste kerk vir die gekleerdes nie. En sy het na die blanke kerk gegaan waar hulle vir haar weggewees het. Maar dit het nie haar moed gebreek nie. Sy het teruggekom en gesê, ek was weggewees, maar ek sal weegaan. Sy was een Rosa Parks, soos daar in Amerika. Jy en nou moest die Montgomery boycott. Sy het gestaan vir haar rechte. Op laarskoel het Moira uitbekeblink. Sy was altyd netjes gekleer en gehoorzaam. Baie onderwijsers het kom klaar met die die. Want sy vir haar vraag wat sy nie moet vraag nie. Sy brei hoekom en waarom. Op haar hoorskool, dit is op die middelbare school, Salbra, want ons nog nie daar die tyd in Mosselbaai een hoorskool gehad nie. Maar sy een van die puik leerders, vir alle natale Afrikaanse en Engels het hy uitgeblink. En die hoofd het al die vraag gevraag, dit is nie meneer Groenwald, die hoofd van Mosselbaai premier middelbare school, het al die vraag aangeraai, dat sy moet toch op woord die journalist, of iemand wat by die radio analyseer die gesprekke, maar sy het gesê, nee meneer, ek wil verpleegstig word. 
En dan het sê haar oorschool loopbaan voltooi het, het sê naar Kaafstad gekom, om loopbaan in die verpleegkunde te volg. Sê dat diploma verwerf, met het, uh, het nummendheid. Sê het onderscheidings gekry in theorie, theor, uh, theorie en in haar praktika. As een verpleegster by Groeneskeer Hospital, het sê, soos een jong meisje, altyd netjes gewees en net haar beste gelever. Daar die tyd het dokter Chris Barnard was by Groeneskeer en het vinnig gesien dat Moira een uitstaande mens is. Toe hy die eerste hartoorplanting doen, het hy aangevraag dat senior verpleester Moira Constance deel moet wees van die span wat in die theater gaan werk. Sy het vir ons vertel daarvan en baie mense was nie gemakkelijk daarmee en nie vir al in die blanke kant. Ek kom sal die kleerling sien die verpleester nou vir dokter of prof, later professor Barnard kom jy help omdat hy die kindigheid in haar hand gesien het en sy was baie flink. En daar toe kom sy huis toe die vraag van ek hoor, sy het vir professor uh, Barnard gejaap in die hartoperatiesaal. Sy sê my, ja Willem, ek is moest die gal. <laughs> en ek sê, maar Tanny, hoe sê dan? Hulle sê, Tanny het geskrop. Sy sê, wat bedoel sy nou? Ek sê, geskrop. Sy sê, nee, maar jy verstaan het verkeerd. Ek was een assistent, ek het geskrap. Ek het instrument aangegeen, sê ek, sorry man. Sorry, sê ek, sê sê, ja. Sy is maar nou my nie weer wit voet saam met my. Sy wil nou nie vir my my sag maak, want sy is ook een cent of twee nie. Sê ek, if you don't believe what I said, leave it. Nou ja, a ginsteling, as a jong meisie, sanger was, al was Presley. Twee liedjies, I can't help falling in love, en die tweede een was Suspicious Mind. Nou, I can't falling in, help falling in love, het in die stad gebeur, toe ek weer hoor, my tante is getrouwd, en uit die huwelik word twee prachtige dochters gebore, Tewene en Tiffany. As een streng vrou, en een vrou van karakter, wat geweet het wat sy wil hee, het sy haar kinders na die beste skole gesteer, om net die beste opvoeding te kry. Altie dan hulle het een suksesvolle loopbaan gevolg by SAL, dit is de Wene, en Tiffany, natuurlijk in die esthetische, in die skoonheid. As jy nou nog nie gevoel het, dat jy is mooi genoeg nie, en moet jy vir Tiffany kom sien. Maar sy sê, en hou net, as jy wel ernstig is, dan gaat jy baie dier betaal vir snijkinde, want vir al vir die plastiese. Nou ja, de Wene het my baie mooi voorgesê, wat ek alles moet sê. Haar ma was een vrou, wat baie spreekwoordies gehad het, moet nie met my een melo kom snij nie. En sy het ook altijd gesê, ek sê my sê, en ek staan vir my ding. So sterk was sy. Nou daar die karakter trekke, het sy natuurlijk van haar pa, William Joseph, of Kree, want hy was ook in die middel 60er jare, onder huisarres gewees, omdat hy een politieke man was, en ook een groot actiefis. Die Constance familie, vir al die dochters, is baie uitstaande mens, hulle is intelligent, want onder, onder die, die nichies en die klein nichies krij jy nou dokters, jy krij rechtsgeleerdes, jy krij ekonomiste, jy krij mense wat sy sê, ja, maar waar krij die mens intelligentie? Daarom moet ons as die seens, die boys en die kunstfamilie besluit, ons gaan ek nou weer naaf, ons die ding wees. Peris was die enigste, eerste seen, wat natuurlijk een moedertuigkunde geword het. Daarna, toe volg Gavin, hy kom die universiteit toe, ek het heel laatste maar iets bijgekom. Ek het maar nooit dag onderwijser geword. Maar, dit wees uit, die talent is daar. As een vrou in die huis was hy baie streng, te vind nie sê, hulle kon nie laat huis toe kom, of enig een huis toe bring nie. Maar dit is deel van die Konsens familie. Toe sy een jong meisje was, moest ek altyd haar liefdesbriefies vir haar kerels geneem het. Daarvan het Antie Sophie en Dedeke nie geweet nie. Maar ek was sê vir oogend vir die eerste keer, dat sy, die eerste kerel in haar leven, was Elvis Presley. Want hy was een baie mooi man. Nou ja, soos ek sê, alle mense 
Kom en jouw van je leven, wanneer jij niet meer daar is sterk en gezond persoon is niet. Verleden jaar hebben ons gehoord dat zij ernstig ziek is en dat zij niet meer daar die sterk vrouw was wat zij geweest het niet. Toen de winnaar ons laat weet dat mama bij je ziek is, was ons bij je geschok. Want zij was een baie private mens. Zij wil je haar bezigheid dat andere mensen het moet weten niet. En daarom was het maar bij het stil gehoor. Maar sedert die 21 juli, het die ziekte was ernstig aangeneem en zij was gehospitaliseerd. Waar ze heel wat tijd in die hospitaal doorgebracht het, van medicatie en ook om vertroost te worden door verpleegsters daar. Die 25ste, die is dus op een zondag, het ik en mijn vrouw voor haar bij die huis kom bezoek, want zij was ontslaan, zij was beter. En daar die dag, voor de eerste keer nadat ons nou lekker gekeerd het en op pad huis toe was, zij was ziek, maar zij het samen met ons recht heel tijd in die gezelschap geweest. Bij bewust van alles wat rondom me gaan, niet in staande alleen. Op pad huis toe voor ons gaan, toe sê zij, Wolf, kan je niet gebed doen nie. Ons het die gebed gedoen, en zoals een pad, hij is toen maar voor ons nog in die motor klim, toen zei ze, wie wat ik lust zo voor vis, vis snoek man. En toen zei mijn vrouw Valerie, tante Moira, ons zal die snoek volgende week brengen. Dit was zaterdag in een dertigste, dat ons die snoek bij die huis klaargebrei en deergekom. Toen was met die gebreide snoek en die prachtige bak brengen, het daar die glimlach van die ene kant naar die andere kant gestrekt. Ze was zo so blij en was het lekker vies gevierd. Daar eens het ik besef, want toen was in die achte jaar kom in die achte plaats, was alles prachtig uitgeleid. Tafels en stoelen, daar was brood op die tafel, messen en vurken, confit. En was het lekker vies gevierd. Allemaal het naar huis toe gaan, en toen was het nog weer net, ons paardje het oor gebleid het. En voor ons huis toe gaan, toen vraag ik is het moeilijk dat ons waar iets in die Bijbel kan lezen? Zij zei toen ja. Maar toen dat het kon ik al zien, zij is moe en zij is pijn. Maar toen het de wena van ingaak, en ik en mijn vrouw Valerie, het van een van haar jonger broers, een gunstige besalm gelees. Besalm 121, dat is nou even als een besalm. Ik sla my oor op naar die bergen. En terwijl ze het van gelees het, het sy, Sy het aard gebreek. Ons is huis toe. Ons is nog op pad. Ons is nog intrek by my. Toe leid my voon. Toe sê sy wat vir haar. Wolf, as jy by die huis sal. Sê ek dan toe, ons trek nog in. Ja, so is veilig. Sy was altyd bekommerd oor mense. Iets wat sy nooit meer zone gegaan het. Waar ook sy was. Sy het een boek gehad met die, met die familie. Sy is een stamboom van die familie. Waar sy name, geboortedatum, sy alles aangeschreef het. En als daar iemand zijn naam of het uh, boordedatum niet in was, nie, als je altijd van iemand gevraagd om het in te tekenen, zo so daar die boeken samen naar het hospitaal toe kan gaan. Nog iets is dat, omdat ze zo so parafaat was, heeft ze nooit geweest dat ze leed nie. Dit was voor mij zo so iets meer waardig. Maar die week van, van die eerste augustus. Na die 8 augustus, toen zij noem, hij is ziek geworden. En zij het hospitaal toe gaan en weer teruggekomen. Zij terug naar het hospitaal toe. En van die 18 van die 18 af terug was het 7 dagen. Met andere woorden, ja, van die 12 is zij in het hospitaal weer opgenomen geweest. En zij was nou kritisch als ze ziek. Maar de wie net van mij laat weet dat haar mama het geweer om enige medicatie of enige andere hulpmiddel te ontvangen om haar pijn te verlig. Ze heeft gezegd ze gaan niks nemen. Nie. En zij heeft zeer wat daar. Het zij alleen gestreed in die dood. De wie net van mij gebeld om te vragen: hoe krijg je mensen om hier die vrouw wat zo so hardkoppig is? en dat kop te krijgen dat ze die medicatie moet nemen. Toen zei ik van, man, als je maar recht hebt, moet je weten, als ze gezegd nee, dan blijf het nee. 
Sy kom dan, word hy toegeneem op die 18e augustus 10 voor 7. Was het allemaal was verslaag gewees, want sy het so uitgesien om ervanaam die dag weer saam met ons te wees, wat was elke jaar as familie gevier het. Toe ek stil wil bries en ek vraag, jyre, hoekom het sy dan nie die medikasie geneem nie? Sy het dan soveel pijn gehad. Toe kom het op by my, dat hier die vrou het daarby wel goed geken, maar sy het die vir ons laat weet die. Romeine 8, vers 17 sê, as ons saam met Christus lei, sal ons ook saam met hom verheerlik word. En daar is sieve daar, het sy saam met hom gelei, soos hy op die kruis vir ons gelei het. En toe sy oor toemaak, toe weet ons, dat sy het die laaste strijd verloor, maar sy het nie geloof, het sy bly hou. Wat die uitstaande mens was sy nie. En laastens wil ek net die sê, dat sy Latijns ook gesegde wat so gaan, so lei die jou Gloria, aan God alleen die eer. Voor ook ons sê ons as familie, aan die Heere, u alleen kom die eer toe, vir die lewe wat u vaak gegeet. En laastens, Amen, wat beteken, tot in alle eeuwigheid, tot in alle eeuwigheid. Amen. My share of losing 
And now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way For what is a man What has he got If not himself Then he has lost Yes, it was mine when of love, I've loved in pride. I had my fill, my share of losing. And now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way For what is a man What has he got If not himself Then he has lost Gavin? Good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, Father Whiteman. I haven't seen you in years. Uh, yes. Christ the King in Rocklands, many moons back. And um, as I was listening to Wilfred and to looking at the pictures, I was thinking to myself, um, 1984 it was when I had to bury my mom, Tavina. And uh, it's not the same, it's never the same. But surely, your uncles and aunts, we feel 
what you feel. And we know, although it's not the same, it's never the same. But, and then, short, well, not too long ago, I was asked to, asked to deliver a tribute at Uncle Avril's funeral at the same church. And that wasn't easy either. But I want to thank you, Davina, for asking me to come and do this. Thank you. Because this would be something of the last thing I could do for my sister. Thank you, Wilfred, for bringing the fish. I'm too far away in George because every time she's on the phone, she asks me, pass my fish. Nee? Can she for my sister keep fish bring? Nee? No, no, no. Pass my fish. <laughs> and I said, if I come to town, I'm going to bring you the fish. I did, it never happened. But she knew that if it was possible, I would have done that. And I said to myself down in George, I said, you know, if I go up to Cape Town with fish, I must take it to her, I must clean it and prepare it and then for, and eat it with her. And I think that's what she wanted, for me to come, bring that fish and have it with her. Let's start by saying thanks to, and these are the Venus words that, well, we had a, uh, conversation later, later yesterday and in the, during the evening and uh, these are this is what Davina wants me to say and to people that she wants specifically to thank. Firstly how many funerals for the great care and service, uh, uh, great care and patience at rendering such a fantastic service. The doctors at Carl Bremer and Tigerberg Hospital for their emergency treatment and then the emergency services for their patients. Yes. Then St. George's, the martyr father, Rodney Whiteman, and uh, the clergy for officiating the funeral service here at your church this morning. Then also thanks to family and friends near and far for messages of condolences during this time. Then the Vina also and the family also wants to thank those who could make a financial a contribution to make this funeral a success. Then to Charmaine and Gino for the mass, for the making of these masks that we are wearing today. Auntie Trudy for the candles and the flowers. We see the candles and the flowers. Then to my mom's friend, Auntie Charlene, thank you for the special care you took to make sure that my mom had everything when we were unable to do so. Then to Auntie Norma, Auntie Norma Brissis, for also being just a phone call away. And these are the Venus words, Moira's grandkids are now your grandkids. Thank you to also to Auntie Eileen, Uncle Gaby, Charmaine and Rhoda, and the Hillsong Church, who made sure that we had food to eat this week. Then to Wilfred, thank you for the tribute. Pastors Philip and Pietro Carls, thank you for your love and support and for leading my mom to the Lord and being there for her. Then to Kayla Media Productions for the live streaming. Daniel. Benjamin and Ryan for your unconditional love and care for your ma and mother-in-law. Then to my mom's neighbor Hilary, thank you for your love and support. Then to the Wakefield family as a whole, thank you for also always including Ma Moira in everything that you planned and did. Christmas will not be the same without her. Special mention to be made of Roche and Charles, who made numerous trips to the hospital, even if, if it was only to drop the burger newspaper. Thanks for your love and support. We know our loss is also your loss. Then Mark Francis, 
Thank you for the love that, and the special bond that you shared with my mother even before I was born. To the greater Constance family, especially those in Mossel Bay who are not able to be here, we miss you all today. Auntie Linda, Uncle Paris, Lyle, Perlin, thank you. We're always ready to help. And then, lastly, if anyone was omitted, Davina and the family wishes to thank everyone for everything you have meant for my mom while she was with us. And thank you once again, Davina, and also to Wilfred today, you, you enlightened us again with our family history and pride. And I think this is what, what, uh, what Fahi stood for. This is what William stood for. This is what Moira stood for. This is what all our siblings stand for today. And for that, we thank from our forefathers, yes, but we go down and we say thank you to the Lord above for putting all these qualities into my grandfather, great-grandfather, who couldn't put all of these into us through our fathers and grandfathers, like people like Moira, Melody, Paris, and, 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 and Avril. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now in a prayer of thanksgiving, we hold up before God Moira's life represented in these tributes, words of thanks and in picture form. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us all with the gift of this earthly life and has given to our dear sister Moira her span of years and gifts of character. God, our Father, we thank you now for all her life, for every memory of love and joy, for every good deed done by her and every sorrow shared with us. We thank you for her life and for her death. We thank you for the rest in Christ she now enjoys. We thank you for giving her to us. We thank you for the glory we shall share together. Hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen to the chorus in moments like these, the words are in the leaflet you have or will be on the screen. We're not allowed to sing, but just reflect deeply on the meaning of these words as the music plays, after which Davina will come and read the gospel reading for us.
listen to this reading. The Gospel reading according to Matthew, chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in this same way. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ our Savior. May I share with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to borrow from um, Wilfred's words and entitle my sharing today uh, with these words, Ek is mos die girl. And um, I, I remembered her, a very close contact with her when I did uh, pr uh, prayer meetings or sorry communion services at homes and she was one of the very very eager ones um, for us to be able to have this service but I always remembered her because she had such a naughty face someone that could you could make a joke with and who could tell jokes to keep the party going do I have it right? Yes. yeah so now I know why she used the phrase ekismus daigo. And can you imagine? Those words came out of her um, reflection on working with Christian Barnard. Now, for years and years and years you heard Christian Barnard this and Christian Barnard that. In a world where she was not even acknowledged for the role she said, Geskrop het Wolfred gesay. A world where she was rejected because of her classification. I've been standing at this lectern and in the sanctuary doing services of people who have died in the previous century and hearing their history, the history of oppression and yet them rising up above those ashes and would not allow the ashes to stick to them but stood out in spite of being pressed down and she was one of them shaped as the tribute said by social and civil consciousness in her family 
and not denying her children the best education in a country that still is oppressive to the, to the downtrodden. And so her picture and just reflecting on the one you chose, which I thought was brilliant, expressed her confidence as a person. She sat like a boss. <laughs> the executive, the CEO and the president all in one. And what I appreciated was in a world where she was rejected and therefore supposedly silenced, she questioned deeply. And I wondered about that because when you question deeply, you are looking into what is being presented to you in words and in actions, but you're also looking beyond that. That's not easy for somebody who was classified and not registered. <laughs> somebody who was told at school where that oppression continued, you're not supposed to question the history we were taught. Now we need to question why is she not part of the history of the heart operation? Why is that story not told about her and all the others who played a significant, though small role in ensuring that that first op was a success? But not just that. How much practice she had to be part of in order to ensure sure that her role linked to all the other roles. So that is why I, I wondered about these words from 1 Corinthians. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I, I know even as I also am known. It is true that when we walk this earth, we do not see everything. And probably we cannot see everything. We cannot know everything. What we do know is a drop in the bucket. These verses talk about us looking forward to the face of God. And yet we are meant to see the face of God every day by looking at each other. For you mirror God to me as I am meant to mirror God to you. But the mirrors we look into representing our lives are shattered mirrors. So the image is distorted. No wonder we speak bad about each other. And no wonder we fail to see the godness in other. And we use various illusional and distorted language to bring each other down. If only we would admit, for we only can see dimly. This history that we are part of in South Africa taught us not only to, that we see dimly, but we were forced not to look beyond the realities we were facing. And so whatever she saw, though dimly, she dared to question. She dared to ask for more. She dared to look beyond. When I thought about being part of this heart operation, um, made me understand that she was a personality that took on complicated opportunities. What a legacy, Tiffany and Davina, you have. Daniel and Benjamin, you have. Extraordinary legacy that you have in front of you. Yes, in this life we only see dimly. Now, 
is St. Paul who wrote these words, telling us, because our, our experience is we look at the mirror, then that which is reflected back at us. In other words, we see ourselves and whatever is in the background. Whatever is part of our reality, whatever makes up our lives, that reflects back at us. Paul is saying, see in a mirror. Not that, that which only reflects back. And I was wondering whether Paul was actually saying, are we meant to see through the mirror? To look what is beyond the reflection we see. For who do we see when we see the reflection? But what are we meant to see? And that is why as we struggle with this sense of only being able to get a glimpse of what it really means to live. We only get a glimpse of our true reality in God because we won't be able to really fathom the fullness of it. That we are Paul says, I only know now in part, but I'm growing towards the time when I will know even as I am fully known. So even I cannot say I'm fully known. We were introduced or helped to reflect on Moira's life through the windows of tributes and will continue to be so when you recall her going forward in your life. And so those tidbits try and put together the full picture, but will we ever know the full picture of her value, of the meaning of her contribution, of the way God worked in and through her life? One of the recalls was how she helped work to build this community through fundraising efforts as well as community. But we're going towards the place where we will fully know and fully be known. So because of that journey towards which we're going, why then do we fight about that which we can only see dimly? Now, the author of this hymn we listened to earlier reflects on this dimness that we have in seeing in the mirror. And he looks at, or he or she looks at every moment, and the author doesn't say what moment. The author draws our attention to in this moment. Three times he says, or she says, in this moment. In this moment, we are commending our dear sister with, to God with thanksgiving. And we reflect it on her life, and we're giving thanks for her life, and we recognize her, the meaning of her life to us and we cherish it. And this is the moment in which sadness and joy are juxtaposed to each other. And he starts off by saying, I will sing out a song. And to whom he will sing out a song and what kind of song will be sung. So in a moment when we can only see dimly, in a moment when we only know in part, in a moment when our, uh, um, the experience of our lives as South Africans has been restricted by classification and not registration, it hasn't stopped us from singing love songs. And to who are we singing this love song? All three of the verses says to Jesus, to Jesus, to Jesus. Wolfred, what was thy Elvis Presley? Suspicious love? Any other? Yeah. 
so ik kan nou niet verstaan waarom jullie gezegd she did it my way. <laughs> Is that what the last legacy was? Speak up louder so that they can capture you. Um, I said to my mom that we weren't aware that her illness was as severe as it was because she was she had carried herself so well. And then she said to me, yes, it was I did it. So so what I'm interested in is the movement, ne? the movement of that that song says suspicious minds which was the questioning mind. She can only see dimly, so you must ask questions. I can only know parts, so I must ask questions. Because I'm going to get to the next level if I don't. But I do so with, but see enough? Yeah. That doesn't stop me from falling in love because I have a suspicious mind. <laughs> and when I know love, I do it my way. Love empowers us. But who is this love? For we can't sing of love unless we know we are loved. Preach it, sister. Who said that now? She knew my throne. We are not just loved. We are the beloved. We are part of inclusive love. God so loved the world that whoever responds to that love in Jesus has the gift of eternal life. St. John in the letter writes, we loved because he first loved us. I did it my way, can become the story of making a firm commitment and a choice. It doesn't mean necessarily, as some would think, that I reject and am not holding on to anything else, but it becomes a personal commitment of, the, of decisiveness in your life. You can't come to that if you haven't thought deeply, questioned deeply, reflected deeply. And then you realize the personalness of making that choice is when we have surrendered our lives to the one who loves us eternally who loves us even when we were still at enmity with him. So why Jesus? In the gospel reading, because his person, the story tells us, was so attractive when the, when the crowds when he saw the crowds, he, he's the one who has his eye on us constantly in the journey of our lives. He's the one who sees deeply. Quite often we read in the gospel readings, when he sees the crowd, his heart was full of compassion for them. He saw what their condition was. Why Jesus? Why do we sing to Jesus love songs? Why do we raise our hands to Jesus? And why do we open our hearts to Jesus? And why should we open our hearts to Jesus? Because he has his eye on us. He sees deeply in our needs. And his presence is electrifyingly gathering people to himself. When I, he said, am lifted up on the cross, I will draw all people to myself.
And isn't that what is central to us as Christians? Isn't that what is good news to us? The centrality of his death on the cross. And we can't speak of his death unless we also speak of his resurrection. Not why, why, why Jesus? Because he's available to us. He becomes available in the space of this earth. He went up, he sat down, he was on a mountain, terrains that we visit. And then he empowers, he challenges our mindsets, he transforms the way we think and therefore believe and therefore live. He began to teach them. He comes with heavenly wisdom, countering every false wisdom the earth presents in order to guide and to shape us as a people of God, as a covenanting people of God. He is in Matthew's Gospel the new Moses, the liberator who comes to present to us the kind of characteristics we need to have as the people of God. He comes to tell us that God seeks to bless us. To cause us to be happy and to journey towards the rewards that He offers us. And where does He start? He starts not with what we've accumulated, He starts not what is of earthly value that will lose its value eventually. He looks at the heart and says, there is poverty in your heart. Why? Because you need God. But do you own up to that? Do you own up to your need for God? Many of us come with an illusion that we fully believe and we really don't. We're on the road to believing. Scripture teaches us the value of this poverty. Because this poverty is equated with our ongoing, daily, momentary need for God. So it's possible in one moment we can forget that we need God. Because we've accumulated. Gives us a false illusion. One author of a prayer writes, God, if in this day I forget you, please do not forget me. And so we go through the lists, and I'm not going to go through every one of them, but safe to say, what, what was Jesus presenting here? What was Jesus wanting us to acknowledge about ourselves? The true picture of ourselves before God. There is no doubt that we are people who have to be in touch with grief and mourning. We lose loved ones to death and to, to disability, to depression, some whose minds no longer are their own. Mourning happens. You lose a pen that's favorite to you. You grieve and mourn. You're angry. And Jesus is saying, acknowledge that. Don't fill the gap with denialism. It's about humility. That he's teaching us humbleness of heart. 
But how many of us long for status, the illusion of power? The Christian life is about recognizing our hunger and our thirst for that which God seeks, justice. In moments like these, why do we sing out a song to Jesus? Why do we raise up our hands to him? Why do we open our hearts to him? For all the reasons that are cited through this scripture. Now this scripture is a scripture given to celebrate Moira's life. To celebrate her Christian life. To celebrate her developing characteristics to celebrate her sense of God and her need for God to celebrate her dependence on God to celebrate her response of love to the God who first loved her we will sing in conclusion to the service in a couple of moments it is well with my soul her departing words, I did it my way. I've made the decision, I stand by it. I know the process I took to make that decision. And as I told somebody the other day when we were reflecting on what hymns to sing at the funeral, said that it is well as my soul is written as it were from heaven back to us. Almost as if to say, I've arrived. And in this new context where I am, this is what is happening to me. It's not just wellness, but wellness of my soul from the depth of my being. It is well with my soul. May we have the courage to believe even though we only see dimly in the mirror. Even though we can only know in part. But we know what He, the one who loves us, revealed to us through Himself and His teaching. And that is why our journey from now should be in all the moments of my life, whatever they may be, I will sing a love song to Jesus. I will raise up my hands to him and I will continue to open my heart to him. Thank you for sharing your mom with us and your granny, your sister, And just maybe the lady who said, Ek is thy girl, you, after COVID, should come together, bring the snook from Mosulbai, braai it and debone it, and then eat it in her honor. We now invite Ryan to come and light the third candle. This candle is a candle that celebrates prayer. We will never, con we will never stop praying for, for Moira, who prays for us with Jesus from the Father's right hand.
In response to the word, let us now offer our prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence to God, our Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant Moira may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn, and especially the extended family. Increase their faith in your undying life. Lord, in your mercy, May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in following your Son, and be ready when you shall call us to the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we commend all those who have died to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, and we may pray that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We now commend our dear sister Moira to the mercy of God, who is our maker and our redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you gave us life, and in your love, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We now entrust Moira to your merciful keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. We pray for the family. Almighty God, a Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with those who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us on earth, to repent of our sins, to turn to Christ, and to follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Amen. And now to prepare Moira's body to be cremated and later interred. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those that fear him. For God knows of what we are made. God remembers that we are but dust. The days of any person is but as grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. But when the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord 
endures forever and ever towards those that fear God and God's righteousness upon their children's children. Into the Lord's most gracious mercy and protection we have entrusted our sister Moira. We now commit her body to be cremated. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. And now, my sisters and brothers, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, comfort and assure you of his love in this world and the next. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go in peace to love our neighbor. Let us go in power to work for reconciliation. Let us go in hope to proclaim the resurrection. Thanks be to God. In our concluding rite, we invite Tiffany and Davina to come and extinguish the candles. I have learnt more than a year ago from an eight-year-old who said at her grandfather's funeral, when our candles, when our lives are extinguished on earth, it's relit in heaven. So please come and do what is a painful experience, but a very necessary one to acknowledge. Just blow it out, yes. Thank you. We will now invite the pallbearers to come forward. We will be leading the procession to the hearse, and then we will lead the hearse to the entrance of the parkway where we will see her off.
sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people, Israel.
And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I traveled east and every highway and more, much more than this. I did it my way. Regrets, I had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do And so it through Without exemption I planned It charted course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I did all More than I could chew But through it all When there was doubt I hated up And spent 
spit it out I faced it all And I stood tall And in it my way I've loved I've loved and cried I had my fill My share of losing And now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way For what is a man What has he got If not himself Then he has not To say the thing He truly feels And not the one Then he has not to say the thing. 